Um, I, eight years ago, through a personal experience which I won't bore you with, decided that older people didn't have a very fair deal. It seemed that um, the recruitment apparatus that existed, and I should point out that I'd been self-employed all my life, so this is a new experience to me, uh, was not exactly set up favourably for them. So I put together as a local enterprise, and bear in mind I was retired then, I was actually getting the state pension as well, and I, uh, uh, I set about setting up the really caring 60-plus recruitment company. And I remember my children, who are now in their 50s, falling about on the floor laughing, saying, it'll never sell, Dad. Not with a title that long. <laughs> anyway, uh, the extraordinary thing is that here, eight years later, our website, and I say this with all humility, but it does give some indications to the size of a, what is an international problem, because I'm talking about the demographic, so-called, our website gets over 20,000 new visits from all over the world every year. That's extraordinary. And only a couple of days ago, we welcomed a very high-powered banker from a company in Europe. I think it was Greece, wasn't it, if I remember right? <laughs> Who um, <laughs> was happily, or had been happily established in Greece but thought that it might be wise to move to this country. I tried to put him off, but uh, unsuccessfully, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, what we have in this country, and interestingly enough, through the website, I now realise that this is an international problem. And I'll read something shortly, which um, I found on a website which uh, was penned in Australia, who, interestingly enough, are ahead of us in terms of trying to solve this problem. And of course, the solution that is desperately needed is not only facilities like we offer, but most importantly, some sort of government initiative, which appears to be lacking, totally, extraordinary. And when I tell you that successive governments have broadcast, and you can Google this, look it up for yourselves, successive governments have broadcast that the demographic, this is people in their 50s and 60s who are twiddling their thumbs, it's costing the Treasury between, it's a wide estimate, but two years ago it was 30, it's now gone up to 50 billion. Billion, folks. I mean, it's just, it's a nonsense. <laughs> and uh, our view on the whole subject of the demographic is that it has to be solved, and it will be solved naturally if the government are not prepared to get off their rear ends and show some sort of initiative, simply because the pension industry obviously can't afford to keep us. Uh, ironically and sadly, the uh, fertility rates are falling, and whereas I think 40 or 50 years ago, there were some seven youngsters supporting every OAP, that's now reversed. So... Uh, if ever there's a case there to allow people who have the will and who are able to work, just give them a chance to do that. Um, it's just so frustrating that uh, uh, we get something like 500 people a year apply to us and to see mature men and women <laughs> who have... Um, really built our society, um, reduced to having virtually their self-esteem crushed totally because of the number of times they've been turned down as overqualified by young, callow people who are recruitment consultants or talent acquisition specialists. I mean, it's... <laughs> Come on, how the heck have we allowed this situation to arise? It's a nonsense, an absolute nonsense. So just a quick summary of us again. Oh, no, well, what I'll do at this time, I'll read out what someone in Australia published very recently, which I think sums it up beautifully. 
and very diplomatically. You may have gathered that diplomacy is not one of my strong suits. <laughs> so uh, I read this with pleasure. The world is on the leading edge of an extraordinarily powerful social and economic change. Many of the complex social challenges that we face require precisely the right mix of life experience and understanding that older people have in abundance. Our political leaders have the potential to create pathways that channel the wisdom and talent of seniors into opportunities that will change millions of lives. Uh, to let you into our secret, which is fairly obvious really, we have nothing, I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but what the heck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tempers fugit. <laughs> um, we, we deal not with HR, nor do we deal with uh, so-called employment, what are they called, employment managers or... Dear, all our representations are made to company owners and managing directors. And surprise, surprise, they are not only happy to take on the older age group, uh, many of them would prefer it because they share similar values. I mean, many of them in their 50s and 60s anyway. So um, that's how we go about finding opportunities. And we've had some wonderful opportunities that we found. Um, we've got uh, someone who was self-employed um, for 60 odd years is now a uh, concierge at the Chelsea Arts Club doing night shift. <laughs> Not because that's the only thing he could find, it's what he wanted to do. And he sends me emails sort of every few months saying, Brian, this is the best job I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Just before Christmas, we had two ladies who came to us who were in their 60s. Delightful ladies. Um, one of them's in Scotland, and she was an accountant. And the other lady was just, well, she was just done all sorts of things. She was a PA, delightful. And so we contacted owners of companies that we knew and we said to them, look, we've got a couple of ladies here we think will fit your bill. Within that week, they were not only interviewed, but the day after the interview, they all started work. And one of those companies, believe it or not, makes shirts for Prince Philip. <laughs>